In this video, we're going to learn what race conditions are, and we'll create a simulated example of a race condition in C. So generally speaking, a race condition occurs when a program depends on the timing of one or more events to function correctly. So in other words, some sequence of events could occur in a way that allows the program to not function correctly. If we have that situation, we have a race condition. Now, where a race condition typically occurs is when we have multiple threads accessing a shared variable or state at the same time. And we'll go over an example of this. We're gonna create two threads that are both going to access simulated bank information. So we're gonna create a bank library that simulates the management of a bank account balance. And we'll have two library functions in our simulated bank account. We're gonna be able to read the balance and write to the balance. So we'll save this file as bank.h and the two library functions will look like this. We'll say int read balance and void write balance, int new balance. And so read balance is going to get the balance, write balance is going to set the balance. Then we'll implement these library functions. So we'll save this file as bank.c and we'll have a variable balance to keep track of the account balance. And then the read balance and write balance functions are gonna access and modify this balance. Now to simulate the idea that this is occurring over a network where there's gonna be some delay in reading the balance and writing the balance, we're going to include UNI STD. And what we'll do is we'll use a sleep function when implementing read balance and write balance. So we'll say int read balance and read balance is really just gonna return the balance. But we'll also put in this sleep function here. We'll say you sleep and we'll say 250000. And we're gonna simulate read balance taking one quarter of a second. We'll do the same thing with write balance. We'll say void write balance int new balance and write balance is also going to simulate traffic occurring over a network where it's going to take some time. So we'll say you sleep again, 25, 0, 0, 0, 0. It'll take one quarter of a second and we'll say balance is equal to new balance. So you can imagine something like an ATM machine. An ATM machine allows a user to deposit money and update their balance. But at some point, that ATM machine is going to have to communicate with some sort of central server that the bank has that actually reflects the account balance at the level of the bank and not just that ATM machine. That's basically what we're simulating here. Let's now create the program that's going to actually carry out the updating of the balance using these library functions. So the first thing we'll do is include bank.h. We'll make a function to carry out a deposit using these library functions. So we'll say void deposit int amount. And this function is gonna carry out a deposit. So we'll copy this, paste it, and the implementation of the function will look like this. First, we're gonna to have to read the balance. So we'll say int account balance is equal to read balance. Then we'll update the balance by the amount provided. So we'll say account balance plus equals amount. So add the amount deposited to the account balance. Then we'll write the balance back. So we'll say write balance, account balance, like that. Now we can call the function. We'll call it twice. We'll make two deposits. We'll say deposit 300 and deposit 200. So we'll put the balance before and after making these deposits. So here we'll say int before is equal to read balance and we'll print out the before balance. So we'll say before percent D backslash N and output before. And then we'll output the balance after making the deposits. So we'll say int after is equal to read balance and printf after percent D backslash N after. So we'll save this. And right now we have a single threaded program where we call deposit, and then after that's done, we call deposit again, and we should get 500 total. 
So we'll compile the program now. And we'll run it. And we get before and then after 500. So we noticed a slight delay there in between opening the before and after balances. That's due to those sleep functions we're using. But we do get 500, which is the correct result. And that's because this is a single threaded program. If we made a multi-threaded program that had deposit functions running at the same time, it's possible for the statements in those deposit functions to interleave in their order of execution, which would lead to a race condition and potentially bad results. Let's go over an example of that now. We're actually going to modify our deposit function slightly to work with p threads. p threads expect the function to return a void pointer, and the function is expected to accept a void pointer as an argument if it has one. So we'll say void star amount. We'll modify deposit to work with these new return and parameter types. So we'll say return null and void star, just because that has to return something. And then for the amount, we'll say void star amount. And here when we add the amount, we're going to be doing some typecasting and dereferencing. So we'll say int star amount. And we'll say star here. And so what we're doing is taking that void pointer and typecasting it to an int pointer. Then we're dereferencing that in pointer to get at the amount. And we're going to have to pass in the amount as a void pointer to an int value that we create in main. That's just how p threads work. So we'll include the p thread library. Include p thread.h. And now we'll make a multi threaded version of this program. We'll say p thread underscore t thread one, p thread underscore t thread two. And these are going to manage and represent our threads. Then instead of calling the functions directly like this, we'll say p thread create and p thread create. Now when we call p thread create, we're going to have it run a thread that's going to conduct a deposit using our deposit function. Now we're going to pass in void pointers to an int that we've defined in main that's going to contain the actual deposit amount. So we'll say int deposit one is equal to 300 and int deposit two is equal to 200. Then we'll say and thread one null deposit void star and then and deposit one. Then we'll do the same thing with thread two. So we'll say thread two deposit void star and deposit two. So what we're doing here is creating two threads, thread one and thread two. They're both going to run the deposit function, but they're going to run it with different amount arguments. So 300 in the case of thread one, and 200 in the case of thread two. And after this is done, we'll join together both threads with our main function here. So we'll say p thread join thread one null and p thread join thread two null. Now let's try to run this multi threaded version of the program and see what happens. So we'll compile it. I'll run it. And now we get after 200. Let's try it again. After 200. We keep getting after 200, despite the fact that the correct answer should be 500. So what's going on here? What's going on here is we have a race condition. Both of these deposit functions are now executing at the same time, as opposed to one after the other as in the single threaded version of our program. Now, when these two threads execute the deposit function at the same time, that gives these statements in the deposit function a chance to interleave across the two threads. When they access shared state, like the balance, that can be a problem. So here's a visualization of what's going on. We have two threads 
that are both executing over time. And time is happening from the top to the bottom here. As those two threads execute, they're both accessing and modifying the bank balance. That's the shared state. We can imagine a situation where if both threads are executing at the same time, the first thread reads the balance. It gets a balance of zero. The second thread reads the balance. It gets a balance of zero. The first thread increases that balance by 300. Now that's happening locally. That's not the bank balance. That's the local balance in that thread's deposit function. Then this thread, thread two, increases its local balance by 200. And then finally, thread one writes its local balance, 300, to that shared balance state. And it writes 300. And the bank balance gets updated to 300. The problem is now thread number two is gonna write its local balance to the shared bank balance state. And it writes 200 to the bank balance. And now the bank balance is set to 200. Part of the reason why those statements are interleaving so easily is because of those sleep statements we put in that simulate the idea of these operations taking time because they're occurring over a network. But that's exactly the sort of thing that can cause a race condition to occur. So we have this problem where we have two threads that are accessing the same shared state. And when they do, they're having a race condition where we really need these operations here to occur in a certain sequence for them to work correctly. When they interleave like this, we get a bug. The possibility of this happening is what's called a race condition. And we want to avoid race conditions in our code. And there are techniques for doing so that I'm going to cover in future videos. But I first wanted to go over what a race condition is and simulate one in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.